Gilgal Christian Center, where burdens roll away. We thank God for the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is Gilgal Christian Center, where burdens are rolled away. I want to welcome you, those that are fellowshipping with us, for the first time the Lord brought you here. Amen. And when the Lord directs your steps, it's because He wants to bless you. Amen. Today, you will not go back the way you came. Amen. I say, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, I will not go back the way I came. I will not go back the way I came. You didn't even mean it. Say, as if you mean it. I, I have an encounter with the God of Gilgal. Say today I have an encounter, yeah, I have an encounter with the God of Gilgal. Because of that, I will not go back the way I came. Shout hallelujah. He's a God of deliverance. He's a God that rose away burden. He's a God of covenant. I made a covenant with him and he made a covenant with me. That as many that will believe in God, Jehovah is name. The God of Gilgal, Christian said that your life can never remain the same. Amen. Amen. That was powerful, my brother. God bless you. God increase our coast. Expand you more and more. Did you enjoy the administration? Since Friday until now. Put your hands together for the Lord for my brother. He is coming back. And I actually just realized that it's my in-law. He married my sister. So we are going to... He did not pay that price. He will pay that price before he goes. The Lord is good. We are still on biblical principles of wealth creation. We are on association part four. We are looking at attributes that will help you to create wealth as a child of God. And we look at wealth, the, uh, the whole acronym of W-E-A-L-T-H. We are dealing with some, we are dealing with A. A means association. And we say that association regulates your acceleration and destination. Association does what? Regulates your acceleration and destination. We are part four. It's timely. I want to, to pay attention. Like I said already, people you associate with would determine the direction of your life. Whether you like it or not. Because sometimes you say, oh, I'm just hanging around with them. I'm not like them. No, you are deceiving yourself. You are like them more than you do know. Whether consciously or subconsciously, their behavior, what they do, how they act, will begin to influence you. And before you know it, you'll be start behaving like them. In other words, if you're hanging around good people, good people that will help you to make changes in your life before long you start behaving like them. If you're hanging around people that are bad influencers, before long you start behaving like them. Who you associate with will regulate your acceleration and of course your destination in life. Make no mistake about that. We talk about this at, at so I'm not going to repeat all that we did. If you want to uh, hear more, go to Facebook or go to YouTube. Every message is there. But last week, we started by looking at the role of a mentor in your life. Or last two weeks or so. They said that if you must make sure progress in life, you need a mentor. A mentor can be somebody that influences you 
positively. Someone you want to model your life after. Someone you want to be like when you grow up, like people say. Say, when I grow up, of course, I want to be like you. They might not mean that, of course, literally, but that is exactly who a mentor is. Someone you look up to, to influence you. You can have more than one mentor. You can have a mentor that you look up to in finances. One that you look up to in your marriage. One that you look up to in, to grow your spiritual life. Many areas of your life. But these are people that have achieved some level of success in their own lives. Sir. People that have gone through struggles and overcome them to get to where they are. These are people you model your life after. Every person that want to make it in life needs a mentor. A mentor could be direct. In other words, someone you see that is or have feet to learn from. A mentor could be indirect. Someone you might not have seen in your entire life, but you are being influenced by what they do or what they say. We call them what? Influencers. You need these people in your life, in your spiritual life to grow. You need to have a mentor. I said last week, if the pastor of your church is not a positive role model in your life, then that is not a church for you. Because the first place to start off a mentor, a spiritual mentor, is the pastor of your church. That's why I tell some of you, you belong to a wrong church. You don't go to church because of friendship. You don't go to church because of culture. You don't go to church because of the pastor has been nice to me or the wife has been nice to me. No, you go to church because you want to change your spiritual life. You want to model your life after the man of God, the woman of God. Oh, shout hallelujah. No, that's true. Don't go to oh. It has been so nice to all before. My God, this is about your spiritual life. If you want niceness, go and give them gifts. Give them money. But otherwise, you must model your life around the spiritual head of that ministry. Because that is who your spiritual role model, your spiritual mentor should be. Otherwise, you don't have any business in that church. I said last night, I said, you don't relate with people because of sympathy. Right. Some of you make sympathy friends. Right. Oh, I'm just trying to help him or her. Oh, you know, she needs my help. Uh, I feel bad for him. No, 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 no. Do not feel bad for someone that would influence your life negatively. Yeah. That is not the kind of sympathy you need. Do you understand me? Yes. Shout hallelujah. We started looking at attributes of a mentee. A mentee. Who is a good mentee? A mentee is somebody that learns from a mentor. We start by saying first, we must be able to do what? To copy. Attribute, the first attribute of a mentee is to be able to do what? To copy. Copy what? The blueprint, the strategies, uh, the goal, what this your mentor is doing. You have to be able to copy. In other words, a mentee is a good student of a mentor. That means you copy the strategy, the successful strategy, the blueprint, the goals, their zeals in life, the way they look at life, you copy. A mentee is a good student of a mentor. Number one attribute, number two attribute. Last week we said you must love the mentor. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It is difficult to copy from someone you don't like. Oh, don't you know that? You can't dislike me and you want to copy from me. <laughs> it's easier if you love that person. If you fall, if you befriend that person, befriend what he or she does. Befriend the strategies, befriend the zeals in life, befriend those things that make these people come to where they are today. You must befriend the strategies, everything they do. You must fall in love with them if you must be a good mentee. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We did that last week because of our time. 
We're not going to go back to that. But today, we look at the third attribute of a mentee, which is be ready to be poured in. Be ready to be what? Poured in. Or be remolded. Be ready to be poured in. A good mentee positions him or herself to be poured in by the mentor. Look at something. A good mentee is willing, ready, and able to receive or be poured in by the mentor. Listen to what Paul said to Timothy. If you look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, he says, I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. What was Paul talking about? He said, I am poured out. In other words, I have poured out everything that was poured into me by the Holy Spirit. I have poured out my knowledge, the wisdom of God, instructions of the Holy Spirit, the teachings of the Holy Spirit. I have poured out the sacrifices that I have to go through, the things I have to do, the amends that I have to make in my spiritual and physical life. I have poured out because it was poured into me uh, by the Holy Spirit yeah. and now poured unto you yeah. too much. Yeah. But listen, you can only pour out what has been poured in. Why don't the line that? You can do what? You can only pour out what had been poured in. Meaning, if what had been poured into you are all rubbish, you will only pour out rubbish. That is good. Why it's important to know who pours into your life. What they pour into your life. Oh, you don't get it. You don't get it. You do not get it. <laughs> you don't get it. Listen to me. This is very important. You can only pour out what has been poured in. What is being poured into you? Do you know? Who is pouring it into you? Some of you go to Facebook and listen to all sorts of trash in the name of preaching. Last few weeks, one man of God, a popular man of God in Nigeria, preached. And he said, God did not tell Noah to build an ark. He said, no. God did not tell Noah to build an ark. Noah came up with the idea. And there were many thousands of people viewing. Do you understand? That is nonsense. Rubbish. Do you know that because someone is a pastor with hundreds of thousands of followers, does not make that person to pour something good into your life. I realize something these days. Most pastors that have achieved success in ministry with hundreds of thousands of members, they don't read the Bible any longer. What they do, they come to a group and start speaking motivation. They don't release the word of God anymore. Listen to them. Go around. You, you hear, they don't preach the word of God any longer. Because people, they, whatever they say, people are excited. They, 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 like, they are meaning God. They become stars. And now they can speak nonsense everywhere. Rubbish mentor. Rubbish mentor. So be very careful. What is poured into you? God did not tell Noah to be the lie. If I one block, I took, took him to the cleaners. The block, I went on and opened the Bible and started reading step by step. As he read, he said, Ah, did God not tell you? Is this not the word of God? Is this not the word of God? Is this not the word of God? 
Amen. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So you can only pour out yes. what hand what in. It's important. And to be poured in the right way, you must first be poured out of what you think you know. Important. To be poured in, even when the right thing comes, even when they're trying to pour in the right thing, you need first to be poured out of what you think you know. Listen to me, this is important. So to be poured out is the word. To be emptied of what you think you already know. To come with a clean slate. To leave your past behind. Remember, this is key. We all come with our past. In front of me, tell you, we are the sum total of our past. We are the sum total of our experiences in life. We are the sum total of our cultural background. And our belief system, we are the sum total of all these things. These are things that fill us. Your background, the way they used to do where you come from, the way you were brought up, the way your parents raised you, the customs, the traditions, these are the backgrounds that define you. You carry these things to adulthood, to who you are today, shaped by the environment that you find yourself. That's why you see some people in the church today. They come to a Pentecostal church like this. We pray warfare prayers. And they don't pray. You ask them, you know, where I come from. We don't we didn't pray like that. No, don't pray like that. He said, no, we don't pray. Say, no. Maybe where I come from, we just do this. <laughs> so then you come and pray. Whoa, fire, fire. No, please, we don't do that kind of prayer. Why? Background. Experiences. There are some churches that don't take, they don't take communion. You go to a church, they are taking communion, and you say, what is this? Oh, please, we don't do communion. When I was brought up, we don't do communion. There, there are so many doctrines and these things to make up who you are. There are so many experiences in life. Maybe you experience hurt in your marriage. Look at marriages, for instance. Whenever they is divorced and remarry, you need to watch out. The second marriage, in case you're not taking, they are bringing the past out into the new relationship. If the woman feels that the man badly treated her, this time around say, look, I will not give myself for any, any man to mess me up. I will show this man today. Any time this man messes up, I will show him. If the man feels that the woman mistreated her in the same way because of breaking your past into the new relationship. If you come from a culture we are getting to the top is by any means necessary. We are getting to the top is through fraud and corruption. Because where most of us come from, that is the culture. You must stay in America and say I will be different. You are lying. Because you have the opportunity to be there. You will steal more than they do. Because they have been in the blood, in the culture. It has been institutionalized. Corruption. Getting to the way up by enemies necessary. By buying, bringing others down in order to get to the top. That is the background we come from. Where people think there is no, no virtue in hard work. You want to make fast money. This day we have Yahoo Yahoo boys. We have all sort of people banking this and that and that. It's not about making fast cash. And that has been the background. If you come from that kind of background, even in a society like this, you still want to make it the fast way. 
You don't see why it's important to make money the hard way. If you come from a background where people believe that the woman's role is in the kitchen, even if you go to school as a woman, you still believe that your job is to take care of the children and bed your husband. That's it and clean the house. You think that because that is the background you know. That is your belief system. That is what you carry into where you are today. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There's a lot we can tell about background. Experiences. The old ways of doing things. Past glory. I can say that about past glory. Because at one point in your life, you were so successful. You were celebrated. Everybody called you Lord or mistress or this or that. And something, somehow something happened. And you perhaps lost all. And now that you want to stand back up, you still carry that past glory. Oh, when I used to be a man. Oh, when I used to be this. Ah, when I used to give to people. Oh, and these things are hindering you from developing your relationship. Because you are still operating with past glory, past achievement, past. If we, if you were me of five years ago, will you come and talk nonsense to me? Yeah. If you were five years ago, would you say that to me? Say God help me. Say God help me. Shout hallelujah. Mm. Amen. 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 To be poured out is to rid yourself of biases that could hinder the acquisition of new knowledge and revelation. Is to come down from your high horse to humble yourself in order to learn. Is to be teachable. That's what it means to be poured out of your own ways. Come down. Brother, sister. <coughs> Come down from that high house. Humble. Be teachable. So you can learn new things. Listen. Before the Holy Spirit could pour into Paul, he first had to empty him or pour him out. If you look at Acts chapter 9, you look at Acts chapter 9. You look at verse 4. It says, As he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly, a light shone around him from heaven. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? The key thing you need to understand here is that he fell to the ground. Powerful revelation. Powerful inferences. This was Saul that we talk about here. A royal person, a royalty, aristocrat. In this day and age, we call him a billionaire. A PhD holder, my sister. Someone that was used to being obeyed at all times by everyone. Someone that could do whatever he wanted and nobody could stop him. The Bible says he was brought down. It's important. By bringing down, it means that he was brought down from the high horse. He was humbled by God. He was, at that point he knew. What he knew was nothing. It was that point he knew there was a higher power, a higher authority, a different kind of royalty yes, sir. <laughs> that superseded what he thought he had or knew. He was brought down from his high horse. Yes, sir. He 
declare what? He was poured out of himself. Poured out of what he thought he knew. Poured out of who he thought he was. To the point to be taught. Because at the level he was, nobody would teach him. Even the Holy Spirit would not teach him. But at the point now, he was ready to talk. The Bible says he was led blind. What is the blind? Being blind means he was blinded to his path. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You don't get it. You don't get it. I must speak to someone. He was what? Blinded to his past. He was blinded to his beginnings. He was blinded to his background. He was blinded to his earthly authority. He was blinded to what he knew. Because God was getting ready to pour in new revelation. Amen. Say new revelation. New revelation. Jump on your feet and declare, my father, my father. My father, my father. Pour into me. Pour into me. New revelation. New revelation. New knowledge. New knowledge. New wisdom. New wisdom. Pour into me, oh God. Pour into me, oh God. New revelation. New knowledge, new, new wisdom, in the name of Jesus, talk to the Lord. My father, my father, I pray this now for the Lord to pour into me, God. New knowledge, new wisdom, new understanding. Open me for you, but the passion of God in this joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You look at verse 7 and 8 of Acts chapter 9. And the man who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. Say, so when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. He was blind. He saw no one. He didn't see where he came from anymore. His royalty is spiritually speaking. Everything about him. He was blind to all those things. God poured him out. I said, God poured him out. Amen. Jump on your face and say, My father, pour me out. My father, pour me out. Pour out of me. Pour out of me. My, past My past experiences. My past belief. My background. My culture. Of me. Of me. The things that will not help me to learn new knowledge in the name of Jesus, tell the Lord to pour out of you. Marabo se karabo, matarabo koto se karabo. It's important you pray that prayer. Uh, because if you are, God does not pour out of you what you think you know, you will not be able to receive what is about to be poured in. <laughs> that was what Paul, uh, what the Holy Spirit did to Saul. He poured out of him what he thought he knew. The dignity he thought he had, the royalty, the knowledge, the authority, everything was poured out of him. So that you create room for what the Holy Spirit was about to pour into him. If you want to learn, look at verse 11. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight. And inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tahos. For behold, he is what? Praying. Imagine. At this point, the pouring in has started. The Bible says, What do you want? Praying. Praying to who? Jesus Christ. Oh, shout hallelujah. The pouring in has started because he had been emptied of what he thought he knew. 
Now God was ready to do what? Pour into him. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. In verse 19 and 20, he said, So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Now listen. He said, Then Saul spent some days with the disciples. Understand that? Underline that. He spent what? Some days with the disciples at Damascus. Why? Because this is also a process of what? Pouring. In. The disciples are one with Jesus. They were poured into and they started pouring into Paul. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. No wonder the next verse says, Then immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogue. That he is what? The Son of God. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Because immediately he preached Christ. In the synagogues, that he was who? The son of God. What happened? New knowledge, new revelation, new ocean, new power, new authority. Ah, shout hallelujah. He was poured out. And now he was poured in. Poured out of what he knew, thought he knew. Poured in of new revelation. Which means the point to learn is that you must be empty in order to receive the pouring in. Amen. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Many of us, why are we not receiving the pouring in? Because we are still very full. Full of ourselves, full of our idea, full of our culture, full of our background, full of our belief system, full of what we think we know. That's that no matter how much they pour into you, there's no space left. There's no more space. You need to create space for new knowledge, for new revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. A good man loses himself or herself in order to gain newness. Newness of life, newness of opportunities, newness of knowledge. Therefore, to create wealth, the biblical way, you must create space in your life to allow your spiritual and physical mentors to pour into you new ideas, new revelation, new lessons, new skill sets, new strategies. Your mentor needs to pour into you. Yes. But you must create space yes. for what is coming new. Amen. That is the only way you can learn yes. from your mentors yes. as a good mentee. Yes. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Otherwise, whatever comes from the mentors will go off like pouring water on the back of a chicken. If you try to bring a hand or something and pour water on the back, what happened? Goes away. Nothing in that. It wouldn't even be wet. So the water doesn't even care, it just go. Hmm? So to create well, the people where you are mentor, not just your mentor, what you learn from the word of God, which we're going to come to a letter. You must create space. Be poured out first so that you can be poured in. Amen. Jump on your feet. Pray the prayer in the way the Lord leads you right now. The way the Holy Spirit is ministering to you right now. The way the Holy Spirit is ministering, because I know the Holy Spirit is ministering to some people right now. Pray the prayer. Tell the Lord, pour me out, oh God, of what I think I know. Pour out of me my pride, yes. arrogance, yes. my beliefs, yes. my tradition, yes. my culture. Yes. Pour out of me my worldly wisdom, the wisdom of the world. 
that are standing as interests to the new things you are doing and we are about to do. Pour out, O oh God. Remodel me, O oh God. Hey, talk to the Holy Spirit. You did a pouring out. You did a pouring out this afternoon in the name of Jesus.
Gilgal Christian Center. Gilgal Christian Center, where burdens roll away. Gilgal Christian Center, a deliverance and prayer ministry.